You don't like finding like, band-aids in your food? Yeah, no. I don't think anybody does. I don't think anybody likes finding a band-aid in their food, but... What do you have going on here? I'm trying to tie up the copas that have been in our fridge carrying for like six months now. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is another day, another week. Another week. Honestly, like some more food preservation. Yeah. Goes great. Yeah. So we're uh, we're excited to learn all of this stuff, learn how to do it, actually do it, instead of forgetting about it in the fridge for six months. I didn't forget about it. I knew it was there. It's <laughs> been hanging over my head. We got the uh, the other beef bung soaking. It's basically like a big giant sausage casing. Uh, yeah, it's from beef intestines. It's like the appendix area, so it's like a. It's like a sock. Yeah, it's like a sock. Uh, that was actually what the guy said. They're like, it's like a sock. Yeah. A really tight, tight sock. sock. I mean, it does look really cool. Yeah. Like I have to say, that's like. Thank you. That looks like a legit. Yeah. You're doing all right. Cured piece of meat. Hopefully it turns out okay. I'm sure it will. I think one of the main hangups. Ha! Huh? See what I did there? One of the main hangups is just finding a place to hang it. Like yeah. we're in what is this? 800 square feet. Yep, 840. 840 square feet. So real estate is kind of a premium in this house. Yeah. And finding a place where we can hang it, where it's out of the way, but like the heat and humidity or whatever yeah. is right. So talked about various places. Yeah. We might be able to hang them in the pantry. I'll put some hooks up there in the corner, and we could just tuck Maybe. them up. Yeah. And we've gotten the messages we've gotten the emails all of the people very concerned about hanging these hams in our kitchen uh everybody's concerned of flies like oh the flies are gonna get to them the flies are gonna ruin them if you don't properly salt and cure your hams yeah you have to worry about that flies don't land on these we watched yeah like we have. they fly up and they leave yeah. they they are not interested it's so salty it is a toxic environment surprising enough to us too like i figured it's like oh we can just hang this wherever people have been doing this for thousands of years and not in air conditioned yeah, like air, kind of air conditioning has been around for what like 70 years yeah i mean yeah. air conditioning is and refrigeration is a relatively new thing yeah uh it's just it's amazing how fast people f get used to this technology yeah. and forget the old ways yeah so we actually asked the hand hewn guys. They were like, "Can we just hang these in our kitchen?" They're like, "Absolutely, you totally can." Ideally, it's in a cooler, a climate controlled cooler. Yeah. But like, this is fine. And I mean, we're in here all the time, so yeah. we keep an eye on them. Yeah, it's one of those things. If they're gonna go bad, you'll know. Yeah. Like if uh, you were to get like maggots and stuff like that, it's in our kitchen. We would know about it. Yeah. And surprisingly enough, I mean, here we are, half a year later and they're fine you need to watch the video yeah. referring back to the hand hewn video, hand -hewn video. i'm telling you crochet hook i know right that would be a lot easier so this is why your copa has that pattern on it. <laughs> it's all the funny lines it's all the the funny lines i have always wondered why certain like meats look a certain way yeah. like like if you go to like a delicatessen and they have the big meat logs they'll cut off lunch meat occasionally they'll have a shape like that like yeah. a, it's a black forest ham usually yes, it, it has nice. that shape mm -hmm. and i always wonder it's like what the heck is that shape well getting into you know cured cured meats like this it's like oh because that's how it was hung up and wrapped yep. that was an art form so it's it's pretty cool to learn this stuff it is And I have to admit, like, that does look really cool. It does. It's kind of fancy. It's kind of fancy. All right, while on the topic of curing meats and learning how to do this, uh, we feel that it is an, a very important skill to at learn, least, have in, your at back least have in your back pocket if you're interested, uh, what to do without refrigeration. How do you keep meat without refrigeration? Well, this, this would be it. We did this class this past January with hand hewn and there was a lot of people that really, really got excited. <laughs> so we're doing another class. This time it's going to be with the Mangalitzas. At uh, least one of them, yeah. At least one of them. Um, we're going to do it this coming January. Uh, it's not time to like sign up or no, anything no, no, like no, that. Close. But 
we will be doing another class. It will be small just because you know, we only have so much room. There's only so much room and the hand hewn guys, you know, they ask that we keep the class small. Yeah. Uh, but that way everybody has yeah, a chance to Yeah. If, if there's too many people, then there's too many people to actually like get your hands in and right. learn the stuff. Class will be kind of small, but we will be doing another class. So stay tuned uh, when it finally gets to the point where we're going to, you know, ask for signups and stuff like that. We will be sure to let you guys know. And if this is something that people really are interested in, maybe we'll work it out to where once or twice a year, maybe we'll uh, it'd be once a year. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll just do a class and we'll just do it every year. Yeah. You know, something like that. Hand Hewn also offers on farm workshops at their place in Ohio. Mm -hmm. So you can go check out their website and see when they have things available. That'd be cool. All right, let's see it. Dun da da. Un copa. Un copa. That All looks right. cool. We'll see you in a year <laughs> or something. Do we need to weigh it at this point? I think so, yeah. Okay, so we were at just under 1,500 grams. Yeah, which it shouldn't change much from that because it's been under cure, so. It's been in the cure, in the fridge, so it's not actively, like, drying out. Right. That. Gain a little bit because of the bung and the string. 1,550. All right. So, yeah, that's the bung and the string. There you go. All right, ready to continue hanging yeah. or start hanging. Start wherever we're putting it. I have no idea. It's gonna hang around for a little bit. Well, you don't like my jokes? I gotta wash my hands. Should I quit being a comedian? <laughs> Should I hang it up? <laughs> okay, so one more thing. Yeah, uh, I don't have a sausage pricker, so uh, I'm just gonna stab this with one of my sewing needles. This is just little holes that are gonna let air out. And probably moisture too. All right, sounds like Buggy is up from her nap. I'm gonna go grab her. What? She's like, I just woke up. <laughs> She's smiling, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Look at that hair. Always epic. That must have been a good nap. <laughs> yeah. Your mommy's telling us. Oh, oh, mommy's telling us. There we go, we got it. There we go, okay. <laughs> One down, one to go. Okay, round two. Yep. This is the spicy one. Yes, this is a hot copa. I got my beef bone. It's been soaking to get the salt off. Stretch it just a little bit to get it started. The other one was like really tight. This one has soaked longer, so I think that's helped. And the last one, I just kind of like opened it up like a sock. Looks like it's going a little bit easier. A little bit. Just gonna kind of shimmy it on there. Okay. Good job. You did that way faster. Well, it's a smaller copa, so I think that helped. Just the same as before, like I was doing earlier. I'm just trussing it back and forth all the way around. Uh, spacing it as even as I can. Shaping it into a log. There. Under. Yep, and it locks it in. Yep. It's like a, kind of like building a bridge. Yeah. Or a rope ladder. The more time you take to make it look nice, by the time it's cured, yeah. it's gonna look really nice. It's really good. Well, I guess it's already cured, see? Terminology. Yeah. It is already cured. This is a cured piece of meat. Right. It has to age. Right. Yeah, I'm good with that. All right. Good job. That looks beautiful. Thank you. Man, it keeps getting darker and darker. Yeah, it does. It looks like it's going to rain. That would be nice. Yeah, we got some pretty gloomy looking thunderclouds. Ooh, I hope so. We need the rain. Although it's that bittersweet we have actually had so much rain that it's causing all of our produce to split and bust, which is very frustrating. Bittersweet thing to have to deal with. 
having either too much rain or no rain whatsoever. Looks like you got it done. Yep, way faster than the last way one. Way faster. All right, there we go, there's our hot copa. Beautimus, scratch that off the list of things that we need to that do. That has been hanging over my head for five months now. <laughs> I've been dreading it. I don't know why. I just have. I, I think I was just worried that I was going to mess it up somehow. It's okay. We got it. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Alrighty. Yay. All right. So what's next? Peaches. Peaches. <laughs> so we don't grow these. Our peach trees are... Not even close. Yay tall. Well, yeah. they're probably about yay tall now. Yeah. Not even close. But there's a fruit stand 15 right. minutes down the road. Yeah. They get all their peaches fresh from South you know Carolina. South Carolina, and they're, they're great. So good. They're not organic, but they are still really so good. good. So as soon as peach season hits, we are literally there every week. We usually get about two of these. What is that? A half yeah, a bushel? Yeah, probably. About half Whatever. A bushel. Baskets. We get two baskets. Yeah, we get two baskets. And um, the first few baskets, when they're you know not quite there yet, they're hard and. We kind of eat through them slow, and then second round of baskets, they last maybe a couple days, oh and gosh. we eat ourselves silly on yes. peaches. We're kind of coming into the end of the season of peach season, and now it's time to start putting them away. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're gonna do. Yep. All right, you wanna explain what we're doing? We are going to go mad dash pick our tomatoes before that ugly thing hits. Hey, look, a basket. Are you coming? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, got you your got hair did. <laughs> so in case anybody was wondering, the jute twine does not work. One by one by one, I'm having to replace them. You can see there's like all the hooks yeah. and then there's a huge gap. Yeah, all those tomatoes are on the ground right now because I haven't had a chance to get out here. Also, don't grow watermelons with your tomatoes. Yes, don't grow watermelons next to your tomatoes because then the watermelons and the weeds get so big, I can't come in here and mow without killing all the watermelons. And yes, there are giant watermelons hiding in all that mess. Lots and lots. Oops, drop one. See, this is what I mean. They split if they get too much water. So it's a shame. That'll become chicken food. So we've got, oh, I just dripped it all down my pants, yuck. So we're losing so many tomatoes because of too much water. Yeah. Like of all the problems they have, I've never had that problem. I know, I mean, it is what it is, it's fine. Got a whole bunch, there's some split ones in there from having too much water, but you can cut that out. Mm -hmm. And that, like I can cut that off. Cut off blossom end rot. So I have fixed the blossom end rot problem. You did, yes. But now we, it, have... now we have too much water, which is frustrating. I mean, every year is different, right? Yep. There's no such thing as perfect gardening. I have some snacks for you guys. Some on the ground. Have some in the compost pile. We have them all in the compost pile. Yeah. Woohoo! This compost pile in the corner is doing great. Almost 140. That's awesome. And they've dismantled it just since yesterday, too. All right, sister, let's go inside. Okay, you want to explain what we're trying? Okay, so... We, we tried it last year. We're just trying it again this year. Yeah, um, this is blanching the peaches to get the skins to slip off easily. They're soft, so they kind of are peeling easily anyways, but you dip them in water for like, I don't know, hot 20... Water. Hot water. Hot boiling water for like 20, 30 seconds, and then you pull them out, put them in the ice bath so they stop cooking because we don't want them to get mushy. We just want it to loosen enough of the outside to get the skin off. Try not to burn yourself while you're doing it. Yep, there we go. Okay, so Just like, like that. 15, 20 seconds. Yeah. Oh yeah, those will look nicer in a can. Yeah, they will. In a jar. Last year we wound up just cutting off the skin and it worked, it's fine. But you know, you get like squared up pieces. <laughs> All right, I will hand these off to you. And I'll slice and dice. Cool. All right, so this is just lime juice, lemon juice lemon and juice. Uh, water. Yep helps it keep the flesh from 
So completely unrelated to preserving peaches. <laughs> we have these spaghetti squash and we're pretty sure they might have crossbred with something because they don't look like normal spaghetti squash. That is not a spaghetti squash. Very curious to see if this actually turns out spaghetti -y. I think this is a crossbred seed. Yeah, because this year we shouldn't have gotten a crossbred product this year. Yeah, it means if the seed it was crossbred from last year, which we did save seed last year from our spaghetti squash. So. Was that what we planted? Because I'm pretty sure we planted seeds. No, from... I planted saved seeds. Well, then these so might be crossbred. It might be a Cherokee tan spaghetti squash. <laughs> that is interesting. I don't know. I don't know. Spaghetti I mean, squash aren't green. Skin is really thick, too. Maybe if they're not spaghetti squash, maybe they're pig food. This was my plan for dinner. <laughs> we can't eat it yet, we have to cook it. Hey, here goes nothing. How long it'll be good or it won't? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it'll eat. Yeah, I think so. Okie dokie. We got, what was that, seven jars? Mm -hmm. A whole water bath canner worth? Yes. Now you're syruping. Yep. It's just very light, simple syrup. Just up smashing them to death. One. One. Six more. I'm glad we blanched these. They look a lot better in the jar. They do. The only bummer is, is it like pre cooks them yeah. a little bit so they're softer. So after canning, they'll be even softer, softer. But they are pretty. We've tried peaches that you don't take the skin off of. And when you open that can of peaches and put it in your cobbler, when you're eating your cobbler, <laughs> finding the super tough piece of skin with the thrice cooked peaches or twice cooked peaches, it's kind of like finding a band aid in your <laughs> cobbler. Like, just like crunching along, or not even crunching along, just nice, delicious cobbler. What is it? Oh, it's a piece of skin. It's like finding a band aid. It's gross. I don't like. You don't like finding band-aids like, in your food? Yeah, no. I don't think anybody does. I don't think anybody likes finding a band-aid in their food, but I definitely... <laughs> I'm just going to quit talking. Shut the window. Because it's raining. Yeah, you can't even tell on film. But it's raining. Okay. Is this the fork you used? It's trying to spaghetti. Yeah, sort of. It actually tastes kind of potato-y. It does kind of taste potato-y. That's, uh, that's interesting. It's not quite a spaghetti squash, that's for sure. No? So that's a crossbreed. Must be. I don't good. know with what. But... I don't know with what. <laughs> it's no, a good. Cherokee spaghetti squash. I guess. Or a spaghetti tan. So I saw you open up some cans. Mm-hmm. This jar of spaghetti sauce. And some meat. And some meat. Can't go wrong with that. Yep. So we're having spaghetti squash. Spaghetti. spaghetti. Yeah. All right, dinner was a success. What was the verdict on the, what they call them? Uh, sketchy sketchy squash. squash, not spaghetti squash. <laughs> sketchy. sketchy. Squash. Uh, what was the verdict on the sketchy squash? I think the name says it all. Not spaghetti squash. No. Whatever kind of crossbreed happened last year, they are not spaghetti squash. They're spaghetti squash like. Yeah. But, oh well. I mean, it's fine. It's one of those things like they'll eat. We can eat them. It's what. If there was no food to be had anywhere and you had a sketchy squash, it That's wouldn't be a bad eat. it yeah. wouldn't be a bad way to survive. So Well, we would just eat it like a pumpkin. So I think it'd be better. Like we like a, a pumpkin or sweet potatoes or you know, starchy things like that. Yeah. Cook them up and eat them as like a savory. Yeah. So cube, yeah. cube them up. Butter, garlic, salt, pepper. Yeah. I think that squash would be better suited to that. Yeah. So yeah. Not, not the end of the world. That's fine. It's been a busy day in the it kitchen, has, has and now that it is like cooled off, we have a little bit of rain. The evening is mine, 
So. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.